Bonsoir, mesdames et messieurs. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is truly an honor to address this distinguished audience. Philanthropy comes in many forms. Some give of their time, others of their wealth or their possessions. But for everyone, giving is a chance to pay forward kindnesses that were once gratefully received. These cycles of giving and receiving have an immense effect on people's lives. Yet donors are seldom aware of the true impact of their gifts. So this evening, I'd like to share my story with you as one example in many of a career that has been advanced by philanthropy. I was born in Karachi, which is a vibrant coastal city on the southern shores of Pakistan. My parents named me after Nadia Kamenichi, the gymnast who, in 1976, scored a perfect 10 right here in Montreal. So living and working in um, the same city where my namesake made history is really quite appealing for me because I feel that when things come full circle, it is because they were really meant to be. Before joining Concordia, I was a postdoctoral fellow at the University of California at San Francisco. I spent four and a half years at a state-of-the-art research institute being trained by leading scientists in the field of alcohol addiction, which is my area of research. The name of the institute was the Ernest Gallo Clinic and Research Center. And if that name sounds familiar, it might be because you've had a chance to sample their wares, and maybe because you've heard about the Ernest and Julio Gallo Winery. So the state-of-the-art research institute was established through a generous endowment from the Gallo family, and it is home to countless discoveries on psychological and brain mechanisms that are involved in alcohol addiction. So although I'm in the psychology department at Concordia, I actually have a PhD in neuroscience from the University of Pittsburgh. And while I was a graduate student, I was supported by a doctoral fellowship from the Howard Hughes Medical Institute. This was the only graduate fellowship opportunity that accepted foreign applicants. And the year I applied, 92 out of over 1,000 applications were funded. So having this fellowship meant that I was free to pursue what I felt was the most critical and pressing scientific question of the day. Why do people smoke? So I had recently discovered that my one-a-day cigarette was impossible to give up. And um, tobacco addiction had just crept up on me. And because most scientific inquiry is driven by ego, I was really determined to figure out how this had happened. My PhD thesis uh, revealed that nicotine, which is the main psychoactive ingredient in tobacco, actually makes good things even better. So a smoke with friends, with a drink, with a cup of coffee, after sex, during a sunset, all of these moments are made more enjoyable by nicotine. And being in these moments actually produces a craving to smoke, which is why it is so difficult to give up smoking. I was very good at quitting. I did it many times. <laughs> In my laboratory at Concordia, we studied the role of environmental cues in alcohol addiction and relapse. Like Pavlov's dogs that learn to associate a metronome with food, human beings learn that the sight and the smell and the taste of alcohol predict the eventual buzz. A critical aspect of my research is to investigate brain mechanisms that allow this uh, association to form and that allow us to express this form of learning. The brain, as you are all aware, is made up of billions of neurons. And these neurons are all jumbled up and interconnected. But in the last 10 years, the field of neuroscience has undergone a quantum leap in techniques that allow us finally to make sense of this jumble. My graduate students use these cutting edge techniques in their research routinely, and they are able to probe brain function in a way that I could never have imagined was possible when I was in their shoes. At Concordia, I'm a member of the Center for Studies in Behavioral Neurobiology. 
The CSBN is a group of 18 behavioral neuroscientists who are all brought together by a shared interest in understanding fundamental processes like learning, memory, reward, motivation, all of which contribute to a range of human disorders, such as drug addiction. Since it was established 33 years ago, the CSBN has been continuously funded by the government of Quebec and by Concordia University. Funding supports administrative and technical staff. It supports scientific workshops, colloquia, um, student training opportunities and fellowships, and much more. The CSBN is a worthy target for philanthropy if anybody is looking to give. Um, it is also much in need of a guardian angel because the provincial uh, program that supports my center is going to cease to exist in 2018. CSBN laboratories really provide a fertile ground for postdoctoral fellows, graduate students, and undergraduates. Um, as the Concordia motto goes, we get our hands dirty. Trainees at all levels get their hands dirty. They learn to think about science. They learn how to conduct experiments. They learn how to analyze and interpret their data. They learn about the prominent theories in the field, and then they make their own empirically based contributions to the literature. Working with students in my laboratory is simultaneously the most challenging and the most rewarding aspect of my job because I'm continuously amazed by their potential and I strive every day to be a better mentor. So I never imagined that life would bring me from Karachi to Montreal, where Nadia Kamenichi scored a perfect 10 and made history. I think uh, being a gymnast is probably pretty amazing, but actually mine is the best job in the world. Because every day I get to give abundantly of my time and my abilities, and in doing so, I pay forward the support that I received um, when I was setting out to achieve my goals of becoming a professor and a scientist. I contribute to the circle of giving and receiving that defines academia and really fuels scientific discovery. Through your gifts to Concordia, you are all also an integral part of this circle. So on behalf of the recipients, thank you for these gifts. Thank you.